Hi, welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Katie and in today's episode I'm going to be seeing how hard it can be to make a cheap toaster oven reliable. On a recent project I had to use some clear epoxy resin. When I got to the instructions the curing time at sort of a room temperature 22 degrees was 72 hours or it said for best results heat cure at 80 degrees C for 60 minutes. Now I liked the for best results but I also liked 60 minutes rather than 72 hours so I went online and found this which was basically the cheapest toaster oven I could get my hands on. It was uh, about £30 in the UK, whatever that works out in US, and it's not worth any more than that amount that I spent. Um, but I was hoping it would do the job. However, on my first test I had a slight suspicion that the temperature control wasn't actually the temperature that it was giving. The way it works is you set the temperature here on this knob and then you have to set the time. I'm going to measure and see just how far out the temperature is and then let's see how hard it can be to actually make a toaster oven controller to give me a precise temperature. How hard could it be? So what steps am I going to take for this project? So I've got a Raspberry Pi Pico here um, handy that I can use. I've got a thermistor spare from a old um, hot end from the wrap wrap that we no longer use. However, I've got a slight problem in that those leads aren't long enough to get it all the way out of the oven. So I'd have to solder onto them. I could solder and I'm probably not going to set the toaster oven higher than the solderable mount for curing resin. It seems to be about 80 degrees C. But I would like to have a little more leeway. I'd like to be able to get to 150 degrees C. I think that would give a lot more scope. But my sticking point is when I come to heat shrink these, the heat shrink I've got is a maximum of 120 degrees. That feels a bit tight on the tolerance that I'd like to be able to set the toaster oven. It would also be quite nice if I could use it in the future for um, doing reflow soldering. I could try to use the um, kitchen thermometer probe. This has got a long enough cable already supplied. I just need to cut the end off and then I could connect it into the Pico directly. So I think that's looking like a good option. So I'm going to experiment with this, check what resistances I'm getting for what temperatures uh, and then I can program the Pico. And then I'm going to have to control the elements. So I've opened up the toaster oven and I can see inside it's all fairly simple. The timer and the temperature are connected in series so the timer has to be set for the temperature to work. The, the temperature just seems to be what the rough sort of temperature is in that side of the toaster oven where the controls are. There doesn't actually seem to be any exact science to it. I've got some of these Omron uh, power relays so this should be able to uh, cope with the mains voltage. Um, it's a 24 volt coil so I'll have to have another power supply to um, supply that 24 volts and then I'll be able to switch that on from the Pico. I think that's our power side of it all sorted out. So I've got to do a bit of a circuit and get programming it and then we can see if I can control this toaster oven using those components. Here's the circuit I've made up for this. I've got the Raspberry Pi PK there in the middle and I've got this OLED screen connected up so I can see what 
temperature it's set to and what the current temperature of the oven is. I've connected in the oven thermometer, which I've suspended with Captain Tape to the underside of the grill. I've got two buttons. One makes it go into temperature set mode, and I'll be able to use this potentiometer to set the target temperature. And that one turns the oven on and tells it to start heating to the set temperature. And then I can also turn it off. I've got this relay here that's currently not connected to anything, but I've connected the signal in. So I need to connect the element to these connections here. But for now, I can see that the current temperature is 19 degrees C, which is what the current room temperature is within one to two degrees. I can press the yellow button and set it into set temperature mode and I can move this from 50 degrees all the way up to setting a target temperature of 350, which I think is probably a bit optimistic for this oven. Put the options there. So I need to connect in these elements so I can press, because at the minute I'll press that button, the relay clicks, you can hear it click, but it's obviously not heating. Turn it back off and it will click off. So let's see where I can connect to in here. I've disconnected all the circuit from this and just rejig stuff so there's not anything loose inside. But these are the two that I want either side of the relay. Right, so now when I run the circuit, I should be able to switch this on and it will actually connect the elements to the mains power and they should switch on. I've powered it on again, I've still got the target of just over 80 degrees and it's measuring current temperature of 19 to 20, which is approximately what the current room temperature is within a degree. So the oven's now got power, but it's not heating up the elements. Now, if I press the red button to say that I'm happy for it to turn on, the relay has clicked. And now I'm just going to wait and see if that current temperature starts to increase as the oven gets warm. And we are, we're going from 20, we got to 25, 26, 27, 28. So I'm just going to keep an eye on it as it's going up. It seems to be staying within about 10 degrees of the set temperature which is a lot more accurate than it was when I was using it with the original controller. We've seen that the theory works, but it wasn't the safest. I don't really want the exposed mains on my desk whilst it's in use. And the control stuff was all on the breadboard, which isn't ideal. Now I'd like to make it something I can use more often. I'm going to transfer all the breadboarded components to some bits of strip board that I've got. The circuit for turning the uh, element on for switching the mains, that's already on this because I've salvaged it from an old project. So I can use that as is still. But I need to make and then I want it to be a bit safer. So I've got this enclosure. Now this is really big for what I actually need. But I wanted something that was going to be big enough that it can stand sort of freestanding next to the oven and it's not going to fall over and stuff and I think this is hefty enough that it should stand on the table. Okay the other issue I had was suspending that uh, meat thermometer um, if it touched any metal then the temperature was inaccurate so sort of having to suspend it under the grill, but then if you move the tray, it got nudged, it fell over. I found this K-type thermocouple in a M6 bolt, so I can drill a hole in the oven and poke that through and use a nut to secure it. And then I've got this DF robot um, K-type to I squared C adapter board, which I'm going to use. So I need to just reprogram that Pico to instead take the analog input of the temperature to take the I squared C output from this board. 
let's get started with that and then hopefully we'll get it all working in something that will be both reliable and safe. I've assembled all the electronics and I've put the back on that. Now I need to connect that up to the toaster oven so it's all safe and all the mains is securely connected. There was quite a lot of connections in here on the original design because it was going through the thermostat and the timer and the LED. To connect all that up they'd use these sort of crimp connectors so I'm going to take those off so I can disconnect all the leads that are loose and I haven't got any more of those but I've got the Wago block connectors so I'm going to use a couple of these to connect up the elements. I've connected it up now, I've got the Wago connectors, I've connected in the bottom element as it was but instead of going top element I've taken it through my control box uh, and then that's going to be switched as I want the elements to turn on and off and then it comes back through this wire which I've just crimped and this can go on the top element. Now I've just got to get the rest of this casing all securely re-put back on to cover all these bare electrics and we can check it's all still working again. I plugged it all in to get ready to film a big reveal um, of it all working because it all worked on the bench uh, to find that it wouldn't work. So I've just done some problem solving, some little tests, work out what it is. Now because this toaster oven is metal it's got a earth point that's on all this metal casing that every time this k-type thermocouple which is through a hole in the casing touches any of the casing it wipes out all the readings and it can't read the temperature i think this is because the k-type is actually connected to the outside of the um, casing that the thermocouple's in so I'm going to just have a little experiment and see if I can uh, try to insulate the sensor a bit. Insulating the uh, thermocouple has all worked. So you could get a non-grounded thermocouple and I think that would solve this problem. This is the parts I've got to play with for now. I didn't think about the fact that the whole case was earthed. I've got my controller here. So the temperature it's showing that it's measuring on the thermocouple seems to be within about 0.5 of a degree. I can press the yellow button and it will go into set temperature mode. And now I can turn this little knob and then I press the yellow button again to set that temperature. And then when I want it to actually uh, start heating up the oven, and trying to get to that temperature I press the red button and I can see this temperature starting to slowly increase. Like we've seen it's got up to temperature, it's got that bit of uh, an overshoot after it's turned the element off. It was aiming for 80 and I'm currently at 91.25 but it is going down so about 10 degrees overshoot which isn't ideal I'm sort of thinking that if I do some calculations and work out this overshoot 
I might be able to make a temperature profile for the oven in my code and compensate for that. If I know it will go up by so many degrees based on what I've set it to. But for what I want to do, it's great. I can start setting the resin because it's it's not going massively over like it was before. I'm not sort of 50 degrees over. One thing I'm not so pleased about is the aperture for the screen. This always bugs me when I'm doing cases, just how messy it looks. I really want to find a nice way of cutting an aperture. If you've got a method that works for you, uh, that's not having a CNC machine, because I don't have a CNC machine at the minute, uh, please let me know, um, because that's something I'd really like to improve. And I'm really pleased with how it looks. I think it looks pretty smart. I've got to find a place on my desk now to store this. But I'm hoping it'll be handy for other projects in the future. How hard could it be to modify a cheap toaster oven and make it accurate enough to use for curing resin? I'm going to say fairly easy. It needed a bit of tweaking. It's mainly just the programming, the LCD screen, the thermocouple, and hooking into the elements that were already there. Yeah, so let me know over on the Element 14 community uh, at the link below if you're going to uh, do this. It should be fairly universal with ovens as long as there's an element that is connected to the mains. You can just put in your control to turn that on and off. But for now, that's all. So I'll see you next time. Bye.